The first part of our model will be the sofa frame. Let's build that in the top and perspective views. Tap the space bar. Make sure that we can see the entire object in the top view. And go for the create menu and choose polygon primitives cube. And we can turn on snapping. Go over here and hold down the X key. And you can snap to the grid. Drag that out. Release the mouse. Then go over to the perspective view and again hold down X. And you can snap. Now we need to be able to see what we're doing better. And we need to change the display modes in the side view, top view, and front view especially. We can choose between different modes. The default currently here is shaded mode. To change the wireframe, just select a view and press 4. Let's start by doing that. We can choose the wireframe view here in the top view. Other things we can do are turn on wireframe on shaded, and that will give us wires on top of the shading here. That'll help here in the perspective view. To turn on wireframe on shading, one way is to use the menus. Shading, wireframe on shaded. And you can see I got a line here to indicate the wire. And then we can also choose X-ray mode. That's sometimes helpful. For example, maybe in the side view, we can go down to shading and choose X-ray. Now we can see through the model. And we can combine that with wireframe on shaded. Shading, wireframe on shaded. This is a good display mode to be in for modeling. We should be able to see through both the object and the image plane. Move that up a bit. And we can resize it. Here in the side view, it looks okay in terms of side to side, but we can't really tell vertically. So once again, we can enter X-ray mode. Another way that we can change the shading modes is through the panel toolbar, which I currently got hidden in order to streamline the interface. I can bring that back for you with Control shift m We've got the panel toolbar here. And these are the shading modes. We've got wireframe unshaded. And then kind of off the screen here, I've also got x-ray. So you need to collapse some of this other stuff because there's so many tools here. And way down here at the end, we'll have an option for x-ray. Cool. So wireframe unshaded is here, and X-ray is here. And we can size it up by eyeball now using the input node. Go into Polycube 1 and adjust the height and depth. We know that the width needs to be exactly 200 centimeters. The rest of it we can set by eyeball. And it looks like a height of about 18, about 16, let's call it. And then we've got the depth. Select that middle mouse drag. And switch to the move tool with the W key. Position that. And then go back here and click here again. And then middle mouse drag. Okay, that looks like it's mostly in place. Maybe have a little bit less depth here. And move forward a bit with W key and the move tool. So that these three corners line up. Okay, so that's our cube. We got that set up. Let's give it a name. We'll call it sofa frame. And also give it a material. Right click and choose assign new material. This will be a blin material. The attribute editor opens. We'll rename it and call it sofa material. Just a few quick adjustments to this material. I'll leave the color at 50% gray but increase the diffuse amount, which is down here. That's the strength of the color. And it's defaulted to only 80% strength, so I'm going to turn that up to almost 100%. Scrolling down, we have a specular shading area. I just want to increase the specular color here up to white to increase the intensity of that highlight, and also turn reflectivity down to zero. We don't want to have mirror reflections here, only specular highlights. All right, we've got all of our material set up. Press Enter to make sure that we've got the name entered in there. We need a division here. We need an edge across here in order to extrude that back upward. I can simply increase the number of subdivisions here to do that. And that would be in subdivisions depth, I'll give it a value of two. Now I've got an edge loop there. That's one way to accomplish this. Let me show you another way. I'll set this back to one. And instead what we'll do is we'll make a multi-cut across. To do that, we want to be in the Polygons menu set. 
Under Mesh Tools, choose Multi-Cut Tool. And we can snap to any edge here, or any vertex. What I'd like to do is snap to the midpoint of these edges. To do that, hold down Shift and click on an edge. Then release the mouse, go over to the opposite edge, hold down Shift again, and click. You'll get a preview of the edge you're about to cut. And then press Enter, and it's been cut. Now I just want to move it. Use the Move tool. And we're actually in multi-component mode currently. If we want, we can go into Edge mode, make things simpler. Right-click and choose Edge Component Mode. Select that edge and just move it back. We want it to correspond with this corner right here, so we'll need to get in closer there. We don't know exactly where that is, or kind of in a little bit of a fuzzy zone there, but we're okay with being imprecise. Maya's usually like that anyway. So that's basically where it needs to go. And I also want to move this edge back a bit, as we can see here. All right, we've got the bottom of the frame ready to extrude. Right-click and go into Face Component Mode and select that top face. We can actually maximize the viewport now, tap the spacebar, and then extrude upward. Edit Mesh Extrude here under the Face category here. Edit Mesh Face Extrude and pull that up. And go back to our side view, tap the spacebar again. Maybe bring it backward and up some more. We can just dial that in. That's more or less where I want it to be. Looking good, except that this back is not perfectly flat. And if we want to, we can make those two polygons share the same plane. Make them flat relative to one another. To do that though, we have to use the modeling toolkit. Just to detour quickly into the modeling toolkit, I'm going to show you one thing in there. But in general, we're not going to be covering that. The modeling toolkit is covered pretty well in a lynda.com course that I did, which is Maya 2014 New Features. Right now, I'll just show you how to make these two faces planar. To do this, we can't really do it from the main interface. We have to open the modeling toolkit. Mesh tools show modeling toolkit, and we need to enable it. Turn the power switch on. And I'm currently in face component mode. I want to select both of these faces using either shift or control shift. And scale. There is a different set of transform tools here just for the modeling toolkit. And these transform tools behave differently than the ones over here that you're used to. And you'll see that they have different manipulators as well. I want the scale tool. And if I scroll down a bit here, I'll see transform options for the scale tool. And this is easiest to see in the side view, so I'll tap the spacebar. Currently, we're scaling according to the world coordinates as shown here. But I can choose local and that will orient the manipulator with the average of the vertices that are currently selected. Once that's done, I can actually just scale this down until I can't scale it anymore. Just scale it down to zero. And once it reaches that limit there, then those two faces are planar. Cool. So that's all I want to show you. I can turn the modeling toolkit off and also close it. And basically I've got my frame. However, if you look at this closely, it's not really good enough. Especially if you want to render this for an animation or a visual effect. It's going to be way too boxy. Let's zoom in on this. We can see that the sides here meet at super sharp corners. If this were real, we could cut ourselves on those edges. We need to soften it up a bit, and that's done with the bevel command. Let's go into Edge Component Mode, right-click and choose Edge. We want to select all of the edges except for the ones that we don't want to bevel. And the ones we don't want to bevel are especially this one in the back and these on the sides here. And optionally, the ones at the bottom are not really that important either. We could probably get away with not doing those. But I'm going to opt to do all of them except for these central ones. It's important that you sort of think through the process before you do a bevel because if your selection is wrong, then your bevel is going to come out very, very wacky. So I'm in Edge Component Mode, select all of these, and just unselect the ones I don't want with the Control key. Control click on these. And I can double check that 
by going into wireframe with the 4 key and changing my background with Alt B and cycle through and finally turning off the grid here. I'm going to turn it off just in this viewport. Here it is, the grid. So now we can see which edges are selected and which are not. You have to change display modes a lot actually in order to check on things. Okay, so those are the correctly selected edges. I'm going to go back to shaded mode with the 5 key. And I'm ready to do my bevel. Edit mesh, edge, bevel. And what we get is just a single angled bevel. What we want is a curved fillet there. And we can go into the input nodes here. Poly bevel 1. Especially segments. Let's increase that to 3. And we could be good enough at this point, but I want to finesse this a little bit. I want to reduce the radius here. That's done through this fraction attribute. I can select fraction and middle mouse drag. And I can change the size of the bevel. That's really all I needed there. Fraction of 0.1 looks pretty good. Now it's rounded out. It's believable at this point. Very good. At this point, our model is essentially finished. And we can go ahead and save a version of this. I'll right click and go into object mode. Go into the file menu once again and choose File, Increment, and Save. And now we have version 2.